Tennessee Williams calls it his best work. But it's only one of a string of plays, short stories, and poems that have made Williams one of the world's most acclaimed writers. He's authored plays like The Glass Menagerie, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Night of the Iguana, and countless others, and is considered by many as America's greatest living playwright. Tennessee, who was born Thomas Lanier Williams III 71 years ago in Columbus, Mississippi, is still writing today. He travels much of the year and, when not in his home in Key West, Florida, spends a good deal of time in New Orleans, where he still owns a home and has many fond memories of his early days here, days that helped shape his writing and his life. I had been a rather uh, uh, proper sort of person, you know? in my private life until I entered the decadent world of New Orleans. <laughs> then I discovered a certain uh, flexibility in my sexual nature, should I say. <laughs> in the quarter you discovered that. Yes, I did indeed. It happened on New Year's Eve, I remember, yeah. As long as we're on that subject, in your memoirs, you talk about homosexuality. Why not? I had one alternative, that was to talk about writing. And I am superstitious about talking about writing. I think that if you talk about writing, you'll stop being able to write. You'll become self-conscious, and when you sit down at your typewriter, you'll be too self-conscious to work. Williams says the homosexuality, or as he calls it, the duality of gender he discovered in New Orleans, was quite useful in his writing. I think that duality of gender is very useful to a writer. He can write both from a male point of view and a female point of view. Or in between. And so I don't, I think it is a, it is not only a practical advantage, because uh, if he is a person of erotic disposition, such as myself, he would be married three or four times and be paying alimony to all these women like, uh, like poor uh, Norma Mailer is. When Williams came to New Orleans, he lived in a number of rooming houses and several apartments here in the French Quarter. One of those was at 722 Toulouse, and another was here in the 600 block of St. Peter. Now, William's apartment overlooked Royal behind me and a streetcar line that used to run there called Desire. That, of course, spawned the play and the classic Marlon Brando, Vivian Lee film, A Streetcar Named Desire, and was one of a number of plays that launched Williams into literary immortality. Have you ever read what the Encyclopedia Britannica says about Tennessee Williams? No, I've got the whole Encyclopedia Britannica in cartons in the closet in Key West. I got an award from them for a life achievement, and David, my brother, received it for me. I was tied up in Vancouver, Canada, and he got it, and uh, they sent me the whole set of them, huge cartons, and I've got them all in the closet. If I may read from the encyclopedia, they say your characters have one common bond, that is, they are psychologically sick and trapped in a world indifferent to them, and uncomprehended by them. Oh, that's very pat, you know, a very pat uh, uh, definition of my characters, I think. Uh, they have to say something, and uh, they usually will say something uh, that uh, will please uh, their editors, I don't know. It also says of your characters, at best, they cling pathetically together in what Williams appears to consider the only remaining bond of sympathetic communication, sex. Ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. My closest friends are people with whom I've had no sex at all. Mm -hmm. Do you identify with, uh, with your characters? I have to. Every, every person is going to create a true character has to be able to project himself into that character in order to create him. Uh -huh. Even though Williams writes every day and has produced dozens of short stories and plays over the past couple of decades, he has not had the great successes as he did in the 40s, 50s, and early 60s. 
And when this interview was taped just before his 70th birthday, Williams was the first to admit his current work is not as well accepted as were his earlier writings. I don't have the huge advantage of you. I'm 69 years old. I'll be 70 on the 26th of March. I certainly don't have the huge backlog of emotional experience that I had to release in my early plays. I do have new things to say, the things that come with experience. I have craftsmanship that comes with experience. I have many things to offer still, or I wouldn't try to work. But my work, I know that I could not have, I could not do another menagerie, nor another street or a cat, and I don't think I should be asked to. They should, uh, you know, I can still function as a playwright, and I can still give them innovative, experimental work which interests me and interests them that if they're permitted to, uh, if the critics will, it, will it, uh, permit me to continue to practice it. And continue writing Tennessee Williams' will. It is, he says, his first love, and for the world, it is his greatest gift.